simply titled my message today, Shut the Door, Pour the Oil. Shut the Door, Pour the Oil. It's found in 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. Today we'll be reading from the NIV version today. If you have it, would you say amen? Amen. The Word of God is important. Amen. And I appreciate your attention uh, to the Word of God. Let's read. The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that he revered the Lord. But now his creditor is coming to take my, bo my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, How can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Can you repeat that last? What, what do you, you have, have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all, she said, except a small jar of oil. Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. And don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door. the door. Would you say that with me? Shut, shut the, the door. door. Shut the door behind you and your sons and pour <coughs> oil. Can you say pour oil? Pour oil. Yes, I say it like a hit. Pour oil. Oh. Pour oil into all the jars. And as each is filled, put it to one side. She left him and shut the door behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her and she kept pouring. Yeah. Wow. And when all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. <clears throat> she went and told the man of God and he said, go sell the oil and pay your debts, you and your sons can live on what is left. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may be seated this morning, if you like. This is a tremendous story. Uh, and you see, this woman, this, uh, can, can, I, can I add a little bit to this? She is, uh, she's a minister's wife. Her husband had been in the school of the prophets, learning to be a minister, learning to exercise the gift of prophecy, if you will. Okay? And so, so Elisha is, can I say he's the coordinator of this? He's the dean of the school. He's the main prophet. And you see the plight of this woman. She has no husband, no income. No food and no prospects. <coughs> she wasn't just a little bit frustrated. She was completely devastated. Uh -huh. yeah. That was her condition and the condition of her sons. You see, her husband was already dead and it looked like someone was going to come and take her sons. She was desperate. Her husband left her with nothing. While he was alive, he was the representation of her hope and the source that she needed. But now, she had nothing. And not only that, but the creditors <clears throat> knocking on the door. The creditors, how many? Well, I'm not going to ask them. Most people in their life have had to deal with a creditor at some point. And so the creditor's knocking on her door. And in those days, they could take you or your sons or daughters and enslave them until the debt could be completely paid back. This poor woman was left with nothing. But let me ask you today. Aren't you glad that you know a God who can take nothing and make, and make it something. Amen. 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 He is a God who can take meager, little, poor circumstances. 
circumstances, <laughs> you may feel like you have nothing for God to use, but God is a God who will make something of it. Amen. If, listen to me, you allow Him and you give it to Him. No matter how little you may think it is, God turns nothing into something. Right. Aren't you glad that you know that? Amen. You see this desperate woman, she cries out to Elisha. Now Elisha is representative of the Word of God, the voice of God in his day. Notice, folks, that she did not go to the bank. She didn't go to her family. She didn't go to her friends. But she went to a source that she knew could take care of the situation. Can I tell you, don't go to the bank first. Don't go to the lawyer first. Don't even go to family and friends first. First, go to God. Yes. Yes. And she recognized that. Here this pastor's wife uh, had been loyal to, to, to her husband and... and and then probably they've spent, I'm, I'm adding to the story, I'm, I'm giving creative license to myself. They probably spent it on people, helping people. And there's nothing left when he's gone. They didn't expect him to die so young. And she's had a desperate situation, a critical point in her life. She's probably done everything that she could imagine to do to correct the situation. Can I tell you that desperation is not always a bad thing? That desperation often is the breeding ground for miracles in your life. And her desperation brought her to the source. The desperation brought her to seek the Word of God from the prophet of God. Can I tell you that sometimes all you need in your life uh, uh, is a message, a word from God. Can I get an amen? amen. You see, uh, you may have a mess, but the word of God can turn it into a message. Amen. I'm preaching now if you want to help catch up with me. Amen? Uh, uh, the, the, the word of God can turn a test into a testimony. Amen? amen? And so she sought out the Word of God. Are you here today to get a Word from God? Amen? Amen. Uh, I believe that we're here today to hear the message that God wants us to hear. You see, sometimes it's in your darkest hour that God can make His presence known the most clearly. He often... And I don't know why. I wish He wouldn't in my life, but He often uses suffering and troubles to show us that He is the only true source. Yes. And on Elisha, she comes to Him and He asks her a question. What do you have in your house? Now let me say this. God does not normally, God normally uses something you have. It's not that God can't uh, uh, take nothing and make something, but he, and he did it in the creation, right? But, but here, Elisha is looking for something, uh, some tangible thing that will uh, uh, be a platform for her faith and for her blessing to come through. That, that's what God often does because He wants you to see that without Him, nothing. You can do nothing in order to tell us. And, and when, but when you offer Him what seems like nothing to you, suddenly you have a miracle Amen. in your hand. And so he, he asked her uh, to, to give her, to give him, or to use, can she use this bottle of oil? Can I tell you that God expects you to bring something to him that demonstrates your faith? Now don't get quiet on me. God wants to use something that you have to demonstrate and to activate your faith. 
You might be sitting here today thinking, what, what, can I, what can I give to God that will demonstrate my faith? I'm not going to answer that for you. I think God will place it in your, in your life. But I will tell you that today at the end of service, and we've already talked about that, that we'll give you an opportunity to demonstrate your faith. And for us to pay off the remaining $4,000, $460.75. That's all that's left on that whole house. When you look at this story, watch what the woman says. Your servant has nothing there at all. You see, she did not understand what she had already in her house. Right. Your servant has nothing at all. <clears throat> And then almost as a second thought, oh, well, by the way, oh yeah, I, I, I got a little bottle of oil. As if to say, well, you, you probably can't really use that, God, but, but, but it's there. I forgot about it. Can I tell you that God, that you have something in your life that you may have forgotten about that God wants to use? Right. That God wants to use uh, to bring about a miracle in your life. God expects you to bring something that demonstrates your faith. She underestimated what she had in her house. It's nothing but a pot of oil. <clears throat> nothing but a pot of oil. But what does an oil represent? The oil, as we know in the Bible, represents the Holy Spirit. Amen. It represents the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So can I tell you, don't underestimate the anointing power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Can I get an amen? amen. We need more of it. We need more of the Holy Spirit, of the oil of God uh, uh, saturating our lives. I wrote one time, on a, and it is still in one of my Bibles, I, I was looking for it this morning. Uh, and I wrote, God, and I'm a little sticky note, God saturate us with your presence so much on the outside that it shows through on our inside. Amen. And that's what God wants to do. That's what the anointing will do in your life. So we need more of it. Now, what's so important about oil? Oil was... Very costly in that day. This pure virgin olive oil could be used to exchange. In other words, it's like money in that day. I mean, no, I'm going to say that. I want to say, show me the money. You know, uh, it's, it's here is the uh, source of this oil. You can use it to exchange. It's money. It can be used, ladies, as a cosmetic, it'll make you glow. It'll make you shine. Uh, your skin will look iridescent. You might not want that, but that's what we do. This oil was like a medicine, used like a medicine to uh, uh, pour over cuts and, 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 and things. And uh, It was used in fuel, as fuel. To light candles, and not to light candles, to light lamps. It was used in burials. It was used to substitute. It's, a, it's still in, in Mediterranean countries. It's still used as a substitute for butter. I know we're in Kentucky. And I love me some butter. Amen. <laughs> I like Paula Dean's recipes. First, you take a stick of butter. Right? Ain't that the start for all of her recipes. But uh, you see... We don't understand in our day the importance of the oil. And, and many times we fail to realize that God has already given us everything that we need in right. order Amen. to see our miracle. Yeah. She said, I have nothing. Can I tell you that our perception of nothing and God's perception of nothing are totally different? Yeah. To her, there was nothing, but to God, it was all he needed to perform a miracle. Can I tell you, you may feel like you have nothing 
to present to God, but to Him, it's not nothing. It's something that He is on the way to prepare a miracle in your life. Wow. And the utterance of, and the anointing and the unction of God is in this place today. You see, we feel like we have nothing to offer. But God can take whatever little we have and turn things around. How many need a turnaround in your life today? Amen? Uh, uh, like this widow, though, in order for us to experience a turnaround, we must give it to God. Yeah. <clears throat> we look at our lives and we sometimes underestimate what we already have. <coughs> Look at your neighbor and say, what you have is enough for God. Amen. What you have is enough for God. <clears throat> when I looked at this story, I could associate with this woman. There's been times when I had little and times I had a little more than that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but, but I could associate with this woman. But every time I was in that situation, if I gave it to God, huh. God was always in the business of making Amen. something. Amen, that's God. right. Yeah. Amen. And that's what, that's what He does in our lives. If it's nothing but a pot of oil, God can multiply the oil. If it's nothing... But a handful of meal in the bottom of a barrel, God can make it last throughout the entire drought. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If it's nothing but, let me get this right, I always get it reversed. Five small loaves and two fish. God can make it more than enough. Amen. Offer God you're nothing. Amen. And watch him make it something. Praise God. Now, as we look at this story, the question that comes and should come to our minds is there's a whole lot of talk in this story yeah. about empty vessels. Emptiness. One of the main themes of this story. There was a student who was studying martial arts. And he went to meet with his master to sit down at a table and have tea with him. And the student, a very good student, sits down and says, Master, I've learned all that you have to teach me about defending myself. But I, I want to know one more thing, Master. Please teach me about the ways of God. So the master picks up the tea kettle and starts to pour the student's cup <laughs> full of tea. Soon the cup was full and it began to spill over onto the sauce. Yeah. But the master continued to pour the tea until it spilled over the saucer and then onto the floor. The student finally looks and he says, stop, stop, the tea is spilling over. The cup can't take anymore. And the master looks at the student and he says this, you're so full of yourself that there's no room in your life. Amen. For God. Food, 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 food. Amen. Yeah. You see, it's, he says it's not possible for you to learn the ways of God until you learn to empty yourself. Learn to empty yourself. I, I, I want to assume something today. Because you're in church, I believe that you would like to know more about God and to experience Him in a greater way. In order to do that, though, you must become an empty vessel. That's right. You must become an empty <clears throat> vessel that He can use. Guys, would you help me? When you look at this story, essentially the woman, the, the, the Lord was saying to this woman, 
You don't have enough empty. You don't have enough empty. He, he looks at her and, and he's saying, you need to get emptier is what the Lord's telling her. Take all the empty that you have and then borrow some more empty so that you can have more empty so I can fill you more. Hallelujah. You see, as you look at this story, the oil never stops flowing, <coughs> never stops moving until there are no more empty vessels to fill. You see, we need to understand that we are not empty enough to contain all that God wants to pour into our life. Right. Amen. And, and, and are we preaching this morning? Can, can I tell you that the oil will stop flowing in our lives if we're not empty? <laughs> right. If we're too full of the world, if Amen. we're too full yeah. of the wisdom of man, the oil will oh, stop man. flowing. The oil will stop flowing in our churches if we don't allow ourselves to be emptied out of our godlessness. Right. right. We've been in a time, as a matter of fact, can I say... You've almost made it. We're, we're on the last day of fasting and prayer. <clears throat> now, for these 21 days, I encourage you to do it some more throughout the year, but you've made it. Congratulations. Right? I mean, you can say like me that it was difficult, but you felt God's presence. <laughs> Amen? I can tell you, and, and, and people have come to me, and some of these are private you know, conversations, but... I've seen answers to prayer throughout this. Amen? So we know that God is moving. But what fasting and prayer does, it not only empties you physically, the outside, you get hungry, hunger pains, you want some good mashed potatoes and some fried chicken and all of that stuff, right? And so you get empty physically, but you are also ridding yourself of the influences of the world. That's why yeah. when you fast and pray, you should also step away from things like social media, Facebook, television, the books you shouldn't be reading yeah. anyway. Yep. Uh, I'll quit meddling. But do you understand what I'm saying? You empty yourself of the worldliness and you take on God. Yeah. You see, if you aren't experiencing the fullness of God, it could be that you're not empty enough. we got a whole lot of empty up here today. A whole lot of empty. Lots and lots of empty. Different sizes of empty. Different types of containers. The main thing about these is they're all empty. Did you say empty? Empty. I'm reminded of the story when Jesus takes six jars that are empty. He's at a wedding and they run out of wine. And Jesus takes the empty and he fills it. He says, hey guys, you servants, would you go get some water in those pots? Now, we, you probably know the story. He turns it into wine. You see, God is always in the business of making something out of that. But sometimes we're too full to begin that. Right. Too full of pride. Too full of self-sufficiency. Too yeah. full of human wisdom. <clears throat> Look at your neighbor and ask them this. <clears throat> Are you empty enough? Are you empty enough? See, I don't want to be filled with the world. I can see what that will do to your life. I want to be full with more of God than I have ever been in my life. And I know you do too. That's why you're here today. There's something inside of you, a God-shaped hole that desires more of God. Can I get an amen? 
So are you empty enough? Look at your neighbor again and say, are you empty enough? You see, in this story, we don't know what these pots may have been used for before. We don't know. This pot, you've got to handle this. Thing. Maybe if she had a pot like this, it might have been used to feed animals. Uh, just put the scraps in here. What we would consider garbage. You may feel like your life has been filled with garbage. But God wants to dump all of that out. It doesn't matter what you've been filled with before. Offer yourself to God and let Him empty you out that He might fill you with this precious Holy Spirit, Amen. this precious yeah. anointing. We don't, I don't know what your life has been filled with. All we know is in this story, God's command was for there to be empty. <clears throat> empty. Emptiness was the requirement. It's still the requirement. <coughs> if you want to be filled with God. Emptiness is the requirement. Empty means having nothing inside. Hollow. Of no worth. No significance. <laughs> Meaningless, <coughs> lifeless, void. Emptiness is an attitude of the heart that says, God, I'm offering you my weakness, my hopelessness, my helplessness, and my powerlessness. I'm offering that to you. I'm giving it wholly to you, God. You see, we are the most valuable to God when we're empty. Now, that doesn't make sense to us, does it? Can I tell you, I hear people all the time say, when I get it all together, I'm coming to church. Yeah, yeah, amen. And I'm yeah. going to live a good life. Yeah. <clears throat> Quit lying. So just say, wrong. <laughs> wrong. you got to get rid of all that you, all that self-sufficiency, all that pride, all that uh, American uh, uh, Thing that says, pull yourselves up by your brute bootstraps and you will make something of yourself. <coughs> Get that out of your mind. Appear before God. Empty. <coughs> empty. Uh -huh. He wants you to be <coughs> empty today. Hmm. What did John the Baptist say? As his ministry was winding down and Jesus' ministry was taking off, he said this, I must decrease and increase. And he must increase. When you look at this story, every vessel that this woman borrowed was a declaration of her desperation. It was admitting to God, I am nothing, I am empty, I am powerless, I am weak. And every time they knocked on a door, they were declaring their emptiness and their desperation. But can I tell you this too? Every empty vessel, every one of them, every empty vessel that they gathered prophesied of a potential blessing. Each one of them, oh, there's a blessing about to happen. Uh, here's some potential for a blessing. There's some potential for a blessing from God. Because why? They are empty. Are, you, are we getting it? Are, are we empty enough? You see, every vessel they gathered was an indication of their faith. got to understand, this had not happened before. This woman had never experienced this. But, but the, the prophet is coming to her and saying, gather all of the empty that you can. And it was her 
obedience and her faith right. will allow her to be yes. blessed beyond what she could imagine. Right. And they gathered the vessels and they shut themselves in. They shut the door. They shut the door. Why? When you need a miracle, when you need a breakthrough, you've got to have the right people around you. Do you, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You know the people in your life that you can shut in with you. And you know those that you need to shut out. Yeah. Right. Now that doesn't sound like a good Christian view, but I'm telling you that. There's some people in your life that are no good for you. Teenagers, young people, there's some people in your life that will just drag you down. Yes, and what Mama and Daddy told you about friends is true. You need to know who to shut yourself in. Yeah. And, and so uh, they shut themselves <coughs> in. Not everybody's going to believe with you for your miracle. And that's a harsh fact. And if they can't believe with you, then you need to shut them out. The wrong people have the potential to rob you of a blessing in your life. If you're desperate, then you need to have the right people around you. You can't afford to hang around with negative people. Am I telling you the truth? Would you help me put that on? You have to create an environment. <laughs> you have to create an environment that will help you grow and develop. Uh -huh. Right? You, you've got to do that. Now, you may say, Pastor's being weird again. <laughs> this is uh, wearing, wearing Pastor Wise clothes. What's, what's going on? Um, can I tell you, this was a woman of faith. She believed the word of the prophet. So, when the prophet said, collect all the pots and the pans you can from your neighbor, the jars that they have, and get your oil that you have. I believe that she was a woman of faith. Now, ladies, if you needed to pour a bunch of oil, would you have on your Sunday best and not wear an apron? No. You see, I believe it would be a step of faith for her to put on the apron to get ready because when you go to pour the oil, it might splash back on you. Can I tell you, when God pours in the oil, it's it splashing yeah. back on you and it's flowing around you and it's getting on other people. And so if you want to take a step of faith, get your apron on. Right. And I'm sure this is probably going to end up somewhere on Facebook. So, you know, that's okay. I'll pose if you want to do that. But, you know. Go ahead, Tori. Go ahead. <laughs>
And so, bring me this. Look, it's empty. <coughs> but she starts by faith. She's got her apron on. She says, guys, get the stuff ready. Uh, uh, all of those are empty. And she begins to pour. Glug, 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 glug. It's pouring in, and it's pouring in, and it's going up to the top. And she said, okay, put that over to the side. Take it over there. I, I want to keep pouring the oil because if I keep pouring, it it's going to keep flowing. You see what's happening? And there she begins go. to pour. She keeps pouring. She's pouring it. Get, get a hold of that. It's going to get full. You want to get a hold of that. Boys, come on now. We, we don't want to stop this oil from flowing. And her faith begins to arise and begin to get stronger and stronger because she's filling up all the empty with the oil and it's flowing. And notice it comes from one source. And she keeps going up. And she keeps going. And that one's full. And her faith begins to rise. Right. She's looking at it as she pours. I owe that guy a whole lot of money. And she keeps pouring. I, uh, my situation, it's getting better, but it ain't over yet. And she keeps pouring. Go ahead and take that, son. Uh, and she keeps pouring. Uh, let me pour some more in here. It looks like it's getting close to the debt getting paid off. Right. I think God. she got excited, and she was pouring more, and it was splashing back up on her, and she kept on pouring, and she kept on pouring. And she began to realize not only was there enough to pay off the debt, but all of a sudden, uh, uh, they, they was going to have a little bit left over. Yeah. All of a sudden, uh, they were going to be able to pay the light bill. They were going to be able to take care of the food problem in their life. They were filling it up. And the boys were getting more excited. They were in there with mama. Can I tell you that you need to have somebody in your life that you are uh, allowing the Holy Spirit to flow? over into their life. And they begin to get excited. Are you excited, God? It's filling up. It's filling up. And they're filling up those cans and those pots. And it don't matter what they used to be filled with. Go ahead and take that one. Uh, but they're being used for God. They're being having oil poured into their life. And they keep pouring and they keep pouring and they keep pouring. Go ahead and take that one. And I believe by faith she continues to look around. Man, this is getting good. It's getting better than good. It's getting exciting in here. Can you say amen? amen. And, and, they're, and they're there, and, and it looks like, oh man, we're almost to the end. Hey, brother. Hey, uh, son. I remember a pot uh, that used to have a flower in it. Can you go get it? Dump out the dirt. Uh, dump out the bad so that we can pour in the good. You know what I'm talking about. Dump it out. Hey, uh, uh, would you bring yeah. it out here? Oh, we're going to fill up this again. Oh, hallelujah. And she just lets it flow out of her life. And the blessings of God are coming to her. And she's going to be able to share with her neighbors. She's going to be able to share with her friends. Because the blessings of God are flowing into her life. And I think she began to look around in desperation. some more because we still got some family and some friends and some neighbors who need to have the blessings of God and they're pouring and they're pouring and they're pouring the oil and it's filling up and it's filling up and it's filling up and they look around there's nothing left to fill the overflowing blessing of God in their life the Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. Amen. Does that take me winning in your life? <clears throat> Can I tell you something? The meaninglessness, the emptiness <clears throat> that these pots over here used to have, now they have purpose. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now they have a reason to exist. Now they, and guess what? When you're full, and God has a work to do, who's he going to use? The ones that are full of him. His anointing, 
His power, His Holy Spirit. But first, we got to come empty. How many want to be so empty today? Hallelujah. Yes. That God will flow through your life. Yes. Instead of it being like a pot, it'll be like an, uh, an oil line. You know what I'm saying? Those pipes that go from uh, Alaska down to the United States that are just, you know what I'm saying, just flowing with the oil of God. Wow. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. <laughs> See, when you're full, you go into a different category. He said, put them over here. You're full. Why do we need to be full? Jesus said, tarry you in the city of Jerusalem until you're being endued with power from on high. Acts 2 says, and they were all filled <coughs> with the Holy Ghost. And God has a work to do. He's looking for the vessel that's full. He's looking for that vessel that is full. One of the issues and the problems in some of our churches, there's too many Christians that are not full of the Holy Ghost. Yeah, I said it, folks. We're Pentecostal. When you come through the door, <laughs> you're also like this. Pentecostal. And there are too many Christians that aren't full of the Holy Ghost. They're satisfied with the goosebumps. You're satisfied with just a touch from God. <clears throat> You're satisfied, Teresa, would you come to the piano? With just a blessing. They want enough of the Holy Ghost to make them happy. Put your toes back. But not enough to make them holy. Good. They want enough of the Holy Ghost <clears throat> to make them feel good. And you should walk out of here and listen to feel like you've been. <coughs> but God wants more for you than just Holy Ghost goosebumps. That's right. He wants to fill you completely so that you can be a vessel of honor that's worthy for Him to use uh, to bless the world. Yes. <coughs> Amen. 